hello and welcome back fellow simmers to that flight sim channel this is captain gonzo and as you can see we are back in our beloved duke you heard us talking about it now in the previous weeks you probably heard me mention it even a few months ago uh to my other videos that i was doing but guys uh whenever this product released from black square i couldn't wait i went on just flight and i picked up a copy for myself as well as captain flacco he got a copy on his end and we went ahead and got the bundle that includes the Duke with the piston engines and of course the turbine Duke with the PT6 engines which is just a monster. If you guys follow us and you guys watched our video from earlier today we had a short live stream where we were testing out the Duke in the turbine config from John Wayne Airport here in beautiful Orange County. So I figured you know what let me come back with the piston variant and this will be a kind of a first impression overall look video as well. Now today we're going to cover the startup here pretty shortly and uh, I'm going to show you guys how the aircraft operates and stuff like that and so far what I can tell you is that this airplane is amazing, super enjoyable to fly, super easy to handle and it's got great power. But anyways guys let's jump right into it shall we? So first thing we want to do is let's remove our engine covers, pedal covers, in our wheel chocks because our parking brake is on. Let's take away the flight control lock. There's the parking brake. Let's go ahead and remove the throttle guard here. Gotta have control for that. And as you can see and probably hear right now, we are running on external power. So the GPU is connected there just on the outside of engine one. So let's get this party started, shall we? First things first is we're gonna set our battery to on. We've already got power being supplied by that 28 volts from the GPU. And before I forget, I'm glad I looked outside. Let's click the keys here. And that's going to close the baggage compartment. Let's go ahead and close that cabin door as well. Take a look. There we go. Looks like everything is locked and secured. As you can see, we've got about half capacity of gas. We've got 57 gallons on the left, 58 on the right, and it looks like we've got a total of about 118 and a half, 119 gallons. So we'll keep the external power connected, obviously. Let's pull up the engine page here on the tablet. Let's kind of get it out here. So what we'll be doing is, is running you through the startup sequence here, and before I do that, let me go ahead and get my rotating beacon light on to let others around me know that we are about to fire up. But we'll just kind of take a look outside. I don't see anybody standing around. Any vehicles are going to be in our way, at least for now. <laughs> so let's get this thing going. Okay. So we are on the left engine page, right? Engine condition is 100%. Battery capacity is at 100. Same thing on the right. I don't see any indicators right now that it would tell me that maybe it's time to service the engine or any components thereof. So the first thing we'll do is let's get the pre-oiler. And we're going to take a look here. You see the oil pump and the pre-oiler, and if we follow the channels here along the crankcase, you should see that brown oil coming through and filling in the individual galleys. So, let's get the pre-oiler going. Check it out, guys. There's the oil circulating. So while that's going on, let's verify our oil PSI gauge for the engine on the left. And you can even tap it, make sure it's nice and free. While that's going on, we're going to prime the left engine. So let's set our mixture, our prop, and our power full forward for the left. And I'm going to turn the left boost pump on. We're going to see the fuel going into the cylinders. And there we go. We've got enough fuel. That's enough. Let's kill that pump. You do not want to over pump this. Uh, you can flood the engine and have issues starting. So now, while the pre-oiler is going on, we're going to go ahead and set our left magneto to both clear prop and then we're going to hold that crank to the right on the start position and we'll just give it a little bit there there we go good engine start let's get power up to about a thousand to twelve hundred rpm And we've got a good, healthy engine running. Let's take off the pre-oiler. We'll set our left generator switch on. 
And since I've got a good engine, let me go ahead and remove that external power. Okay. Now we're running off of the battery and the left generator. We'll keep it right there. So same thing, guys. Let's go over to the right engine. We're going to set the pre-oiler to the right. There goes the oil. As the oil is making its way through the crankcase, make sure full forward. Prop lever up. Throttle open. Rice boost pump coming on. There we go, we've got some fuel. Kill that pump. Let's crank her. Good engine start on number two. Bring back power to idle. We can turn off the pre-oiler. And one thing I did forget to verify, that is probably a good idea to have, is your cow flaps. I want to make sure that they're open. This allows more airflow in and out of the engine, and especially at, uh, while we're sitting here on the ground, not a lot of air is coming through, so obviously the engines will tend to get hotter a lot quicker. But you can find those right here, guys. The cow flap switches, you would just hold those to open if they weren't already done so, but in my case, they were open, so we're good. Let's set the right generator on go and let's get our avionics master on and our inverter to main so we're good on this end guys we don't need to look at our electronic flight back anymore I'm pretty happy with what's going on we've got two healthy engines and this is more of a good uh, aid when you're starting the engines like this from a cold and dark setup you can find your electronics page here if you really want to take a look it shows you how your buses tie into every switch and feature in here Got your cabin and your environmental controls. Everything here showing you what's happening in the aircraft. So, pretty awesome stuff, guys. So, let's go ahead and stow that tablet up. And just listen to that engine idle. I'm loving it so far, guys. This is one heck of a product. And keep in mind that this is the early access release. So, they're still not done with this. So, I can't wait to see what Black Square keeps doing on so, let's go ahead and get our pitch trim on. Now that we've got power, let's get our nav light on. And pretty soon here we'll be needing the panel lights, but for now I'll keep it just as it is. We're not really doing anything specific today. We're just going to take off out of here and see how the aircraft handles. We'll keep it VFR. Put our squawk on standby in the meantime. Let's set our altimeter. 3019. But yeah guys, everything's looking good, so let's get let's get this bird ready to taxi out of here, shall we? Alright, let's get the parking brake off. Let's get our yoke. And let's get flaps set down to the first position here. Flaps look good. Taxi light coming on. And I think we're set to go guys, so let's give it a little power. And first thing we're gonna do is test the brakes and make sure we've got a good steer. Checking the brakes. Good on the brakes. Good steering. Let's make our way to the runway. And you'll have to excuse the ground service equipment that is driving all over erratically, just like that American Airlines catering truck just did. Once again, that is courtesy of GSX Pro. I guess one thing I do have to do is reduce the amount of ground vehicles in the airport vicinity because it gets a little annoying, as you can see. I, I am holding short of runway 2 left here, or 2 0, I should say. No, I'm right, 2 left. And there's an American Airlines holding short as well, so that's pretty awesome. So anyways, we're setting up for departure here. Let's go ahead and close the little window here. I want to make sure that's nice and secured before takeoff. Let's go ahead and get our lights set to strobe and nav. Our beacon and recognition lights on. 
Let's get the landing lights on. We'll go ahead and set the transponder to altitude reporting. And other than that, everything else looks good. We'll enable the prop sync. And you know what? Let's get the panel lights on so you guys can take a look since we are here in the early part of sunset. And look at that. I love the coloring. If you look down here, we've got various scroll wheels for our interior lighting. So if you want to have predominantly the red, you can just reduce the white floodlight, and there you go. And similarly, you can reduce the red and increase the white floodlight. So we'll keep a little mix of both. I like it. I like that reddish, whitish tone. So we'll take a quick look here. Let me get my pedo heat on before we get off the ground. And we won't be doing the run-up here. I still haven't really dug through the manual to really understand the run-up uh, specifically for this multi-engine aircraft. But I'm assuming it's just like what I do on the Cessna. You know, we're checking the magnetos, checking for a specific RPM drop, and making sure that we have a good engine idle afterwards. And just making sure that there's no signs of foul fouling in the engines or the spark plugs and stuff like that. So that if we did have an issue, we could just turn around and taxi back to the ramp and save ourselves some trouble. But anyways, guys, enough of the chatter. Let's just go ahead and take the runway and get flying. And if you're wondering, the scenery here at John Wayne Airport in Orange County is by UK2000. They make some great scenery, guys, and they have a lot of static models that just occupy the airport, so you don't even have to worry about a traffic ejector. The airport looks plentiful alive with the default stuff here. Okay, we'll wait for the Sky Chef's vehicle there to cross. Get on the brakes. Make sure our prop handles are full forward. Mixture's full rich. Let's do a quick flight controls check, although you want to do this before you occupy a runway. Otherwise, the tower would not be your friend. So we're going to increase power, and I want you guys to just listen in so you can hear those turbochargers spooling up. Airspeed's alive. There's 80, pulling back on the yoke. And just like that, guys, we're airborne. Here's in transit. We're climbing at just about 2,000 feet a minute right now, and this plane feels great, guys got a good positive rate of climb so let's go ahead and clean the flaps up trimming because that nose is going to want to drop on you and let's go ahead and turn off our taxi and landing lights because they are I think attached to the main landing gear nose gear so we won't be needing those on ahead and make a shallow left turn here. And while we're climbing up, I'm going to set my altitude set for the autopilot to, uh, let's say, let's say 10,000 feet. crossing 3,000 feet and it's just been barely over a minute and change since we took off so again guys this aircraft has great performance obviously the turbine variant is gonna blow your mind away when you get behind it it is practically the big brother of the Baron and it's kind of in between a King Air 90 maybe like a C90 uh, or even a 100 and yeah 
you get the benefit of having a nice private cabin, which sits up to six people total. And you get the performance of a hot rod, which is why I love this piston variant. But yes, the turbine variant will definitely impress you. So I highly recommend that you guys just buy the bundle. It's gonna save you money down the road instead of buying them each independently. And I'm telling you guys, there's gonna be days that you're probably just gonna to wanna to hop into the turbine variant and just burn some Jet A instead of 100 low lead. But while we're climbing here, I'm gonna go ahead and engage my autopilot. And I'm gonna let it do its thing into the heading mode. It's gonna be just of our nose here. So autopilot is coming on. Hands are off the controls, feet off the rudder. The aircraft is flying, guys. And I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy the views here. Alrighty guys, so we've made it to this point in the video where I think it's a good time to cut it off and we'll pick up obviously in another set of videos later on with the Duke. And like I mentioned earlier, remember we do have the piston variant which you're seeing here now and we also have the turbine variant which we used earlier today in our live stream. But the purpose of this video was to check out the piston a little bit more and get some practice with the startup so feel free to use it as a tutorial of some sort. Now, I'm sure, as always, I may have missed a thing or two here and there. I do have to read through the manual, which is included in the community folder wherever the installer drops the aircraft. But guys, it was just a quick, kind of short, impromptu video to get you guys exposed to the Duke. Maybe help you make a decision whether or not it's worth it. And my vote is yes. So please get yourself a copy because it is 100% worth it. But this will do it for this video, guys. As always, I appreciate you guys watching and tuning in to us, giving us the support. Uh, we really appreciate it, and we look forward to pumping out more content as we continue to progress through our channel. But this is Captain Gonzo with that Flight Sim channel. You guys, just enjoy the views and the scenes. Happy flying.